My name is Don Dixon and I want to thank you for joining me again today for another uh, Structure Fishing Workshop. We've been talking about all of the different types of lakes there are to fish and we've just concluded our discussion uh, of all the various sizes and shapes of natural lakes and how to go about fishing them and what some of the keys were. And now we're moving from that into uh, a discussion on man-made reservoirs. And I guess over the last 35 or 40 years, you know, there's just more and more reservoirs going up every day uh, for a lot of different reasons and creating more fisheries. It also creates situations where we have to become familiar with the different types of reservoirs that exist uh, and learn how to identify each and every one and at the same time uh, learn how to fish them successfully. In other words, there are keys to fishing each and every different type of reservoir. We're not changing our overall approach, but there are different keys to success in different types of reservoirs. And I want to point all of that out to you so that you just have a better chance of being successful regardless of where you're fishing. Now, as we begin this study on reservoirs, I want, it's important to point out that some reservoirs are built in lowland kind of terrain, old farm country. Uh, some are built in high mountainous areas, uh, while others are built in, in big flatland areas, like out in Texas, for instance. So it, we really have three different types of reservoirs. We have lowlands, we have flatlands, and we have highlands. We call them what they are, lowland, flatland, highland. Now, within each one of those categories, there are multiple variations of those reservoirs. There's lowland number one, lowland number two. We categorize lowland number three, lowland number four. So there are four variances within the lowland category. So I'm going to describe each and every one to you how to recognize it and what the keys might be to fishing it. Then in flatlands, we have two major types of flatland reservoirs. Uh, flatland one, relatively small reservoirs, but built in flat terrain. Then you have flatland two, some of the big huge reservoirs down in Texas and out in the Midwest. Uh, huge reservoirs, some 100,000, 200,000 acres flat terrain, flatland number twos. And then you have the highland group. We have a highland one, we have a highland two, and then we have what we categorize a highland three, which is really a canyon type lake uh, out west. So those are our nine different types of reservoirs we need to identify and talk about the keys and fishing each and every one of them. Now, as we enter into this study, I'm gonna be showing you some pictures of different reservoirs so that hopefully you can look at a map and determine what the heck it is you're looking at uh, once we finish this study. And I normally start with the lowland group and then go to flatland and then end up with the highland group. But I've been getting an awful lot of questionnaires from, from folks who are fishing highland reservoirs. So I'm gonna reverse it uh, today as we enter into this discussion and I'm going to start with the highland group simply because I'm having so many questions. Now, a highland number one reservoir is just what it says it is. It's built in high mountainous terrain. Rocky, high mountainous terrain. Now, if you look at a road map, you don't even have to have a fishing map, just look at a road map. When you see a lake it's relatively skinny and has just hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of little uh, sharp coves going off of it. Just all up and down. I'll show you a picture of one right here. It's like looking at Dale Hollow, Tennessee. This is a highland reservoir. This is built in mountainous terrain. It's a dead giveaway. You look at a road map, you can tell a highland number one every time. Now, if I had to say all other things being equal, the Highland Group is the toughest group of reservoirs to fish. Why is that so? Let me tell you. Here's what you're running into. Because it's built in mountainous terrains, you have mountains. 
and underneath the water is pretty much what you have above the water. So in a highland number one, down in the dam area, for sure, you come off the shoreline about five feet and you're in 60 feet of water. It's straight up and straight down, just like the terrain is above the water, that's what it is underneath the water. We don't see any long, nice ridge-like bars reaching out from the shoreline. They don't exist. You have deep, steep, and to make matters worse, clear water. That's what you've got. You got straight up and down clear water. You have tough fishing. No other way to say it. Now I've shared with you earlier uh, some of the keys that I have in fishing a Highland Number One reservoir is to race towards the headwaters. When it's too deep, too steep, too clear, move up the reservoir. Now if you're going to have any chance at all to find any flatter structure. Uh, any better watercolor, it's going to be towards the headwaters. Now, in many cases, these highland reservoirs, you have the same situation from the dam area all the way up. You, you don't have any relief from it. It's just steep, deep, clear, and the lack of identifiable, workable, and that's the key, workable structure. Bottom line, it's tough fishing. Now, the very first article I ever wrote for Fish and Facts magazine. I was fishing a Highland Reservoir in Pennsylvania and I ended up going all the way up to the headwaters before I found all my fish. I found a little better water color, a little flatter structures and that was the whole key to my success. Now, a lot of times when these reservoirs are new, fish all over the place, a lot of fish being caught. But once they've adapted to their situation, it really gets tough. In addition to that, you can see every spring when you have the runoff, which colors up the water, and you have a pre-spawn and spawning condition where fish are going to be shallow to begin with, plus you have some added water color due to the runoff, you're going to see a lot of success early spring. Now once that spawn is over, and you're into the summer months, the bulk of the season, and all of that early uh, season sediment, all of that rough stuff in the water has all settled down and now you have deep, clear, steep, tough fishing. Don't forget now, when you got deep fish because the water is so stinking clear, the deeper you go, the colder the water. We've been over this a million times. So what you have is a dormant fish. His metabolism slows down and it becomes extremely dormant. Plus, you don't have any real targets in the way of structure to fish deep. We have the ability to fish deep with wire line and on the cast with jump baits, but if we have no target, looking for a fish, bulk of the season, in most all Highland number one lakes is pretty futile, unless you find some better stuff towards the headwaters. So, I hate to say it, but you're stuck with what you're stuck with. Some people say, that's all I have to fish. I have a highland reservoir. I got to go 300 miles to get to the next body of water. Well, you're stuck. You're going to have to really get good at deep water map and interpretation and presentation of rules. But your hope is to move towards the headwaters in hopes that you can find some better water color and some more workable structure. Now, Let's move on to highland number two. Highland number two is still the same problem, deep and steep and so on and so forth, except, as you can see by this picture, the uh, river channel is wider, the lake is somewhat wider, and as you look at the side feeder stream cuts, they seem to be longer, and it's creating more rounded edges out there into the lake. And in a highland number one, all of those wee little coves that you see on the map, most of them aren't really live feeder stream coves. They're just more of a wash that's taking place in the high country, just a wash. Some of these side feeder stream cuts will have a live river coming in there and it could be creating some better water color. So all of, in a highland too, we're looking at all these side feeder stream cuts. 
And many times as we're showing in this picture, when you get to the upper areas of a highland too, you may even see an island or two. And remember, when our study on structure, when you see an island, there's a pretty good chance that there's some underwater islands or underwater homes. This is another dead giveaway that you have a little more flat or a little more workable structure in a Highland 2 than you do in a Highland 1. Now, that moves us to a Highland 3. And Buck added this category uh, years ago. More and more fishermen were starting to fish these canyon-type lakes out west. Now, in a canyon-type lake, all you really need to do is look at the, your surrounding areas above water. You have a canyon. It's like watching the old cowboy movies. You have this canyon. And then all of a sudden there's a lake. Well, underwater is going to be the same as above water. You have deep, rocky, steep, lack of structure, clear, cold water, and dormant fish, period. One of your main keys in fishing the island moved towards the headwaters. But in some of these canyon lakes, you can't ever seem to escape the canyon. No matter how far up you go, you still got canyon. Fortunately, there is one other key that we can look for in this canyon type place. And Buck was really big on this one. So don't brush this one off. I want you to really get this because there's not much we can do about the rest of that canyon. We can't do anything about it. It is what it is. It's like me out here. I don't have a 35 foot drop off that I can go cast uh, into 60 feet of water. It doesn't exist. I got to hope the fish move 10 or 12 feet in order for me to catch them out here next to the deep water slot. So I'm stuck with what I'm stuck with. If you're fishing a canyon lake, you're stuck with what you're stuck with. But there is something you can do. And this is going to be key for you. And it's not necessarily easy to find, but you got to look for it. And when you find it, it'll pay off. It'll be worthwhile. It'll be worth the time you spent looking for it. Now, Buck calls it a slide, or you could call it a wash. As you're traveling along looking at the shoreline, you have nothing but rock, canyon, and then you might come on to a spot where there's a little wash, it goes back in, but as you look up top, you see dirt, where there was a slide, part of that canyon caved in. And down near the shoreline where the wash is, it all settled right there. Now the real key here is, look for the dirt. When you're fishing that canyon lake, look for some dirt. If all you can see is that face rock, you're in trouble. You got to find some dirt. And in many cases, it'll show up where part of that, you know, over the thousand years, some, some of that mountainside caved in and created some of this dirt that fell down there and created a little bar that sticks out. Workable structure. Easy enough. If you see a wash or if you see one of those slides, if you see one of those hillsides that they caved in a little bit and all that erosion that took place and all of a sudden you go in there it's real easy to find out if you have a, if you have a bar if it formed a bar but all of that stuff to cut loose that created that situation it had to land somewhere and normally what happens it creates a workable structure for you so i can't stress that enough look for the dirt look for those slides look for those washes at one time, something happened there that pro most probably created a fishing situation for you. And that's pretty much all you can do. Other than that, all I can say is with the Highland Group, you must, if you're stuck with that, you must also get really good at your deep water mapping and interpretation and deep water presentation of lures because you have a tough fishing situation. And if you get so good that you're consistently successful on a canyon lake, you can go anywhere in the world and load the boat. You can go anywhere and catch it. And so thanks for being with me today, I appreciate you. 
Be sure to like us on Facebook if you would. Follow us on Instagram and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here if you haven't already. We appreciate it. And we'll see you next time.